morning, everybody. This morning, I want to talk about truth. This felt timely to discuss because, well, it's, it's so difficult to find. According to the New York Times, we are currently in a war on truth, unless they're lying, but that would be just ironic. It can be easy for us to get caught up in trying to determine truth for ourselves on topics outside of the household of faith, such as politics or COVID or social justice. I've lately noticed how the world has devalued truth and honesty. People lie. It would seem that certain people lie habitually because they think they will benefit in the short term from their lies. Yes, this is our politicians. Yes, this is our news outlets. But something I've seen recently is how many people around me outside of the household of faith diminish the value of truth, of honesty, and of integrity. Truth is hard to find outside of the word and the ecclesia, not that we're perfect. I have even had a coworker admit to me that he doesn't value honesty. In other words, he doesn't really care if people around him lie. He views it as inevitable and that it's something that everybody does. Of course, politicians are notoriously untrustworthy. And the jokes we have about lawyers and used car salesmen aren't new. And the news will carry the same event from very different perspectives and even using very different facts, depending on which news outlet you're watching, listening to, or reading. And finding a trustworthy contractor or mechanic is like finding a needle in a haystack. However, we shouldn't get caught up in supporting a social movement or debating politics or arguing about which news station is the most accurate. Instead, we should be turning to scripture for comfort and truth. We can trust scripture. We can see prophecies fulfilled, archeological proof of the Bible, and even medical advice in scripture was thousands of years ahead of its time. When we open the word, we can trust that it is true and there is immense peace and safety. Trying to figure out what is true or not in the world is frustrating and tiresome, but fortunately, we don't need to. We have the word. Psalm 118, verses 8 and 9. It is better to trust in Yahweh than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in Yahweh than to put confidence in princes. What does this look like? This is turning to his word for answers, comfort, and joy. When the world exhausts us, when we become discouraged by the nonsense and confusion and noise of this world, we should turn to scripture and find relief and peace in the unchanging steadfastness of our Lord. Psalm 25 and verse five says, lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation. For you, I wait all the day long. The word truth is so important to us as Christadelphians that we use it to define ourselves. We say that we have the truth. We ask others if they were raised in the truth. Truth is the thing that binds our community together. It's why our community was formed, not because of earthly heritage or similar interests or cultural similarities. We shouldn't value culture or tradition over doctrine. Other communities did not have the truth, and our brethren wouldn't settle for anything less than truth, and so our community was formed. And we too shouldn't settle for anything less than truth. We won't find this in the world. Scripture makes it clear that devaluing truth is not a new concept. And we can turn to Romans 1 and verse 25. because they have exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever, amen. We see this in, the, in, the, in our lives around us. 
men worshiping themselves rather than God, caring more about their lies than God's truth. God is truth, inseparably. We know that yet God cannot lie, as we're told in Numbers 23 and 19. And we read in Exodus 34 and 5 and 6, And Yahweh descended in the cloud and stood with him, Moses, there, and proclaimed the name of Yahweh. And Yahweh passed by before him and proclaimed, Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Truth is so important to our God that he uses it to describe his very character. In fact, we know it is impossible for God to lie, as we're told in Hebrews 6, 18. And Proverbs 12, 22 says that lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. There's no shortage of verses to support this. And if God cannot lie, then we know that his word, as contained in these 66 books, must also be pure and truthful. Thy word is truth, as Christ says in John 17, 17. And the psalmist in Psalm 119 and verse 160, thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ in John 14 and verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. We can only approach unto God through Christ. And in John 1, 14, we're told, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Christ was full of grace and truth, and we should be imitators of him. In Titus 1, Paul writes to Titus about the qualifications of an elder. Paul states that an elder should hold fast the faithful word, which is in accordance with the teaching, so that he will be able both to exhort in sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict. Truth allows us to encourage our brethren and to correct those who do not have truth. Of course, truth is part of the armor of God that we should be clothed in daily. Turning to Ephesians 6. And starting at verse 14. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Girding our loins with truth is the first piece of the armor mentioned. Similarly, in Philippians 4, when we're given a list of things on which to allow our mind to dwell, whatsoever is true is the first one listed. Our minds should be pondering scripture and the awe of God's creation and seeking ways to please him. Unlike those of this world who do not know truth, we don't need to be living in fear. Proverbs 30 and verse 5 assures us, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. So what does God desire from us? Psalms 51 and verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. We can have confidence that if we pray to God in truth, he will hear us and be near to us. Psalm 145 and verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto all them 
that call upon him and to all them that call upon him in truth. And this is what we can expect from God when we call on him in truth, Psalm 86 and verse 5. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. So if we trust in God, what has he promised us? The prophet Isaiah writes in chapter 32 and verse 17, and the work of righteousness shall be peace. quite a contrast to what we see around us in the world and continuing on and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever or safety forever and my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places later isaiah says in chapter 40 and verse 10 and 11 Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. This is what waits for us, if we wait patiently on Christ. Waiting patiently on the Lord involves keeping his commandments. But we know that we all have sinned. 1 John 1 and verse, verses 6 through 9 states, If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is why we're here today, to confess our sins. And to be cleansed from all unrighteousness and to strive to walk in the light as he is in the light i'd like to close with a passage a few passages from revelation 21 that draw quite the contrast between this future age we're waiting for and the world around us today And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, 
which is the second death. Skipping down to verse 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them that are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. 